All right. We're going in the game three on backwater. Remember, once again, I haven't seen these games except for the very last one, but I, I did, obviously I do know how it ends. That doesn't take away from the excitement. It's not about who wins, it's about how. But in the bottom, I think we're going to take a more, we've kind of broken it down. We're going to take a more hype uh, caster tone for, for this game. A little bit less of the pausing and analysis, a little bit more of the in the moment. Uh, but we'll break it down afterwards. In the bottom right, the Finnish Zerg looking dominant so far. Embracing the swarm and overwhelming his Protoss opponent. It is Sarah. And in the top left, from Deutschland, a little bit too passive, just not able to put up enough of a fight. Can he change it up in game number three? It's showtime. And it's showtime. You can't go down three. You don't down 3-0, there's very there have been a single digit number of dozens, maybe hundreds of finals in, in eight years of StarCraft II history. Uh, of this caliber, this level of play, this much on the line. There have been a single maybe four or five reverse sweeps, aka down 3-0, win 4-3. So going down 3-0 is almost a, is pretty much a death warrant. It's 2-0 now. Looks like we're going to be opening up. I believe the same again. Now, backwater's a little different. Backwater... You have a pocket third. Now, a, a base like this is very vulnerable to drops. But, Showtime can take his third base kind of early, almost with impunity. If he uses his Stargate well, I wouldn't be surprised to see a third Nexus before he gets any additional gates. Now, uh, maybe he'll throw one down at the front. It looks like that's very likely. But, you can afford to be a little bit greedier as long as you confirm your opponent isn't making a bunch of roaches. Uh, and just trying to kill you. And, and we've seen Cyril, the only time he makes roaches is when he has five bases, apparently. So, we'll have to see. But we have some sort of European gentleman's agreement here where we're going to play essentially not not the same openers, but very similar openers each game. Once again, Showtime, Gate Expand into Stargate. Cyril with a quick three bases. He's got Zergling speed. One little difference, it doesn't look like he's adding on Overlord speed as quickly. Uh, instead, it's going to be an evolution chamber. All right, so we're mixing it up a bit. He may try for uh, a drop, or he may just go for the upgrades. I'm not sure, but a little bit different here. But at the same time, Showtime mixing it up. No Oracle first. It's going to be a Phoenix. A Dropper Lord on the way. Oh, but the Phoenix finds it. Will the Lings actually get in in time? There's a second Phoenix. He didn't go for an Oracle at all. So Showtime off to a strong start. Cyril just cancels it. He knows this isn't happening. So instead, I mean, Showtime, I'm sure he's uh, understands the map a bit. Realizes this is a, an imminent threat. Wait, did he scout the... He didn't scout the Evo Chamber. This is all just instinct here. So... Showtime choosing a strong build to kick things off. Shuts down Cyril's early attempt at pressure. That's not a huge loss. That was just a little bit of uh, a harass, a little bit of pressure. Not a big commitment from Cyril at all. It's not like, oh my god, his entire build is crumbling before our eyes. What will Cyril do to recover? He will make some drones, get on a third base, and be kind of pretty much completely fine. I, that's what he's going to do. Now, when does Showtime take his third? He's been in favor of getting the Robo before any additional bases, making sure he has access to that tag. I love this Terran music blasting in the uh, Protoss versus Zerg. It really gets me in the mood. But four queens are the choice from Cyril. Did he it looks like he pulled them mostly off of injects. He didn't just build a bunch of extra queens, though he is building some. Two Spore Crawlers. 
on the uh, outermost base where the queens are going to have trouble defending. It's going to be a quick robo bay. So Showtime mixing it up. Uh, if he's dealing with Hydras or Banelings, well, Hydras, Lings, and Banelings. And he has a very defensive posture with these bases. The Colossi, definitely a strong choice with their buff against light units. Another Phoenix on the way. Interesting. He's going up to... Is that going to be six? Yeah. So Showtime really relying on these Phoenixes. Aggressive scouting. A bit of harass. Shuts down the drops that Cero has... Drops have been uh, very effective for Cero. If he keeps most of these Phoenixes alive... Loses one. But having four or five Phoenixes makes it much harder to get those Dropper Lords in. Uh, and that means Showtime won't have to top as many of his ground units at home. Another Overlord going down. Cyril taking some damage. It's still it's it's still mostly superficial. He's got plenty of drones. He's getting a fourth base. He's got creep spread, and there's really no chance of Showtime moving out to pressure. Once again, now I, I like that Showtime has mixed it up. He's he's finding at least some way to put pressure on Cyril. He's finding some way to dictate the pace of the game, and he's forced Cyril to respond to him. He's said, okay. Uh, you have to defend against the Phoenixes. You have to sit back. You have no real aggressive options. Now, Cyril is going for an infestation pit. He's skipping the Hydralis entirely. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry. Whoever is in the Terran Orchestra needs to calm it down a little bit. It's just too loud. Dun, dun. The Terrans show their face even when they don't make it to the finals. Rip special. And now part of this, once again, part of this is the aggressive scouting. It's not just killing drones or killing overlords. It's getting in, seeing that infestation pit. That's a key point. We've got a Void Ray, a Colossus Void Ray. What year is it? Colossus Void Ray is the choice. Seven more drones go down, Cyril, on 77. Some roaches are, are, are coming out. There's no real anti-air, but that won't be a huge issue unless there's multiple Void Rays. I think Cyril has correctly identified this is Colossi to kick things off here, which means that Hydralis will get roasted. The roaches, on the other hand, don't take very much damage at all. The Colossi do a lot extra versus light. The Hive is on the way. Ravagers... Ravagers also not light or armored, so they actually don't have a tag on them, uh, is an interesting point. Which means, besides biological, so they take extra damage from Archons, but not from the Stalkers and not from the Colossi. They are a little bit more fragile in that they're larger, have a larger hitbox, uh, clunkier to move around, but they do have corrosive bile in those options as well. So will Serral just try to slam home uh, the point? Once again, Showtime sitting back, getting four bases, going up to a semi-Sky Toss army, just a full death ball. But Cyril, not really been able to put on pressure. The Phoenix is already preempting a drop. Showtime knows his weakness. This is probably the strongest start that Showtime has had in getting his units together without Cyril taking a massive economy. But he's going straight for the swarm. The hive is finished. An Ultralist Cavern is on the way. No Hydra is done, just Lings, Banes, Roaches, and Ravagers. He's just going to try to roll through. Will we have enough units, though? Storm is not... Okay, Storm will be finished by the time this fight commences. That's a lot of Zerglings. They're not Adrenalings yet. Serial should be adding that on very soon. Increasing that attack speed of the Zerglings dramatically. A drop comes in, a Baneling drop with plus two. Now, very important, plus two attack on the Banelings allows you to one-shot probes. So that means a single Baneling could potentially kill all of Showtime's probes if they're stacked up. Oh, the Zerglings looking for a snipe. A lot of Queens. More Banelings on the way. 26 more. The Zerglings looking for an opportunity for counterattack, but Showtime holds strong. He's trying to get out on the map. He knows if he gives Serral too much time, he'll, he'll not only max out, but he'll have the power to remax again and again and again and again with so many units. He's going for the Fleet Beacon. He's going for the Stargates. But oh my god, Serral. Cyril has so, so many Banelings. He tries to get the wraparound. Good force fields will deny a lot of this. this oh, my God. 
I start choking. It looks like Showtime might join me. A recall comes out, but how much will escape? A Colossi, a couple Void Rays. Storms, not enough to deal with that. There's still a few Templar on the field, and by a few I mean one. It has enough energy for one Storm. Serral just overruns this. He's coming in from all sides. Once again, there are some shield batteries. The Storms are good. The Banelings are deflected for now. An Immortal coming out. Corrosive Bile onto the Void Rays. They dodge out of the way. I just noticed very technically there's no anti here. The Colossi holding strong. Banelings in the front trying to make their way through. The Probes still mining from this base somehow. There's no counter for the Void Rays. Banelings connect with a handful of the Probes. He's left with 63. But Cyril, remember, when Banelings attack, they always get one kill, and that kill is themselves. So even though Cyril doing good damage, he still doesn't actually have a direct counter for the Void Raid. Or a, a mothership when it comes out. Cyril keeps hammering on the front door and Showtime barely holding that door. Ultralisks are the next wave as uh, in our tower defense game. Cyril with not quite as much creep spread as the previous game, but still halfway across the map. Very intimidating. Some key points. There's no warp prism out on the map. There's no adrenal glands for these zerglings. I think that's a pretty major oversight out of Cyril. Uh, it really increases their DPS dramatically, even if they don't live for that long. But five ultralisks. Serial City on 83 drones. What is that? One, two, three, four, five, six now bases coming up. Showtime just holding as strong as possible. That Colossus with 33 kills. Oh, the Banelings coming in. You can't... Oh, no! A Templar! Those are plus three Banelings. How much... I don't know exactly how much damage they do, but it, it gets very close to killing a Templar, let alone probes. Seven more Banes on the way. Serial is maxed out again. Showtime isn't that close. Once again, going for the Void Rays and the Carrier here. Showtime, uh, a bit like a broken record. Maybe this time, it'll actually work. Some Overlords even dropping creep. The Queens are here for anti-air. A few Banelings will be drawn in, but the Ultralists are coming in. Maybe not the greatest angle there. Force Fields will not be able to keep them out. Showtime retreats behind everything. Some Storms come through. The Banelings, not quite going to do what they want to there. Lings trickling through the front. There's nothing really here to defend, but there aren't that many Banelings. The Charge Lots can hold the line for now. Some Storms raining down on the Lings. The Void Rays are charged up, but they're targeting the Queens, which are not armored units. Showtime still with a lot of supplies. Some Immortals in the front, trying to dodge back behind the cannons. Blasting through the Ultralists. The Ultralists don't have the Queen's support. Once again, Showtime holds. He's still got 68 probes. He still has plenty of Void Rays. At what point do we see Infestors? We have some Corruptors, but those aren't incredible against Void Rays. The Carriers are coming out. Showtime holds again. And, and a mothership has completed. Cyril just keeps throwing himself against the base, and Showtime keeps holding on to it. Another round of Zerglings on the other side. Still no Adrenal Gland. Still a pretty big mistake. Showtime trying to move out. Cyril still has options. Looks like he's going to take the launch tower. Plus three attack about to complete. Three carriers. Well, one carrier about to complete. Two more in the mail. But Serral still doesn't... This is, the Showtime's army is getting quite scared. He's only got four Templar. But he is building the carriers. He doesn't have any upgrades for them yet. That's still a lot of ultras. How many immortals? Only three immortals underneath. Serral moving on the left side once again. His creep spread doesn't quite reach far enough. But the Corrosive Bile is going to knock down the Zealot, the Cyber Core, and Gateways alike. Showtime scrambling back. He doesn't choose to recall. The wall is broken, but will he come through the breach? No, not this time. But at the same time, the Zerglings to the top. Showtime not going to have enough to defend. That'll have to be a cancel. He's, he's drying out in the main. The Natural down to the four larger patches. Showtime needs another base. Serral's starting to bank up money with his max out. Does he have a Greater Spire? He doesn't have a Greater Spire yet, but honestly, there's not that much ground army to worry about. I take it back. Another round of Banelings. The Changelings are dropped. A storm hits everything. Of course, all these units can survive one, but if they're out for too long, the elements will get to them. The Void Rays are charged up. The Prismatics fully aligned. Sarah will be forced to retreat again. The supplies are even. Two Ultralists to the top. Charge Lots aren't going to be enough. He doesn't have Dark Templar. 
A cyber core was just rebuilt. One ultralisk may be overstaying its welcome. Wait. Okay. But Saro continues to build so many units, and Showtime continues to defend a base canceled or killed once again. Showtime running out of money. And carriers, every interceptor killed is another 15 minerals. They're not free. Saral has taken most, all of the bottom of the map and some, some of the eastern side. Ten more corruptors. The Greater Spire Burrow. Uh, <laughs> pathogen glands for the infestors. Plus three ground carapace. Still no adrenal glands. That can, like, if this game is close enough, that's a deciding factor. The adrenal glands are, are such a huge upgrade for Zerglings, especially taking down things like Nexi. Once again, the Zergling's going to go for the cancel, but the Archon's going to say no. The wall rebuilt once again under fire. The storms hit all the Corruptors. Terrible, terrible damage. The Prismatics are aligned. Carrier's being targeted down, but the Void Ray is doing great damage here. The Corruptor's not going to be able to get close enough. The Ultralis forced back as well. Another time, Serral is thrown back, and this time he dips to 140 supply. He's starting to replace some of that. He's going for Corruptors, but most of the Carriers survived. The storms blew away so much of their HP that they just couldn't continue the fight. And Ultra was going for probes. An interesting scenario, an interesting world we live in right now. Finally, Infester, Cyril has decided the brute force strategy may not be cutting it. It's time for a little bit of finesse because that last engagement, just so many, so many resources lost. He, he can't even remax out. Uh, it's getting dangerous because Showtime is building more and more carriers. He has Archons. He has plenty. Of, well, he has several Templar. Cyril has all the money in the world. But if you don't spend it on the right things, does it actually matter? Showtime has another base. He has a breath of life. Cyril needs to... Even Spore Crawler's coming up. The wall once again. How many times? Do the Mongolian Zerg try to break through? And how many times does the dynasty of Showtime hold the wall? The creep is at the front door. The fungal hits a lot of units. There are no uh, vipers to really take advantage of this. But the cost effectiveness, this is a death ball. Three carriers, six Archons, four Immortals, five Templar, a Mama ship. <laughs> We're back to Phoenix Harass. Showtime killing workers for the first time in about 10 minutes. <laughs> this is happening. Cyril going to back off. He has every base except for uh, the one Showtime currently occupies and one to the north. The Spore Crawler is being taken out, but he doesn't want to be hit by any key fungals. The Neural Parasite catches one Archon. Storm's hitting everything close. Some fungals coming through Corrosive Bile. Knocks down a bunch of the Void Rays. Beautiful combination. But at the same time, three more carriers on the way. Another warp in will reinforce. The carriers, a lot of them still in the sky. Cyril does not have money in the bank. For the first time, Showtime moving out on the map. He's finally clearing some of this creep. He's moving forward. Where are the Templar? They do not have the storms. And without the storms, he can't stay out here. Some Charizards coming through. Showtime starting to bank up money. Cyril banking up a little as well, but the only base that Showtime could really take right now is being taken. And Ultralisk going to hold the line. Yeah, still no Adrenal Glands. Not that that's the, the biggest mistake, but every unit counts here. Showtime making that very apparent. More Ultralisk, but you're not touching this. Starting to look at some of the kill counts here. Maybe on the Templar. Where did these Corruptors? The Corruptors cancel the base with the Caustic Spray. Trying to target things down. This will pull some of the army back. Cyril 
the, the, the swarm as most of the map, but the Protoss hold for so long. Zero really starting to bank up money now. What is his unit composition looking like? 103 larva in the bank. Triple digits. He could potentially... Well, can you even make 100 zerglings? Well, technically, yes. He could make 100 zerglings at a time if he had the money. I don't know if I've ever seen triple digits before. I've seen high double digits, but triple is... Oh, the Corruptors have plus two attack. Storm's finally coming through. A few units sniped off there. The Infestors are the choice. The Corruptors spraying down a Nexus. They don't want to overstay their welcome. A couple storms will soften them up drastically. Now this base, showtime. In typical Bronze League Heroes fashion, builds the Assimilators before the base is even done. He knows he wants them. The Infestor's coming up. He has Neural. He has Fungal. Both are good choices here. Goes with the Neural Parasite. But the Infestor's could be popped and taken away. Cyril still looking for an opportunity with the Corruptors and on the ground. He may have too many workers. 83 drones means his army supply is just always smaller than Showtime if Showtime's close to maxing out. This is awkward. Which one of these is not like the others? Yep. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> the ultras, honestly, I th it, this is just throwing away the. You don't even want ultras anymore. If he had DTs, he could clean these up almost for freeze. But no, no dark shrine yet. A bit of an oversight, and no adrenal glands. A bit of an oversight on both sides. Now, Showtime doesn't want to spend too much gas, but a couple DTs in the right spot can do game-winning damage. Oh, the Ultra survived. <laughs> Another round of Corruptors. How many? He has 28. I've never seen Storm used on Changelings before, but today is that day. But the Mothership sniped off. Only a couple Corruptors go down. He's going to rebuild that immediately. There you go. In the main base. And the game still nowhere near a conclusion. Cyril has a lot of money in the bank, but he still can't. This is just such a powerful Protoss. Another base has been opened up. Cyril didn't mind too much from this. So, th th this is some viable minerals for Showtime here. It's still, like, there's still no clear winner. Cyril has had all of the bases for almost all of the game. We're 23 minutes in. It, it refuses. He, Showtime not only refuses to die, but he lives strongly and vibrantly and continues to take bases and win fights. And it looks like he's going to do it again. He's going to take the top right, and we're going to be in essentially a, a little bit of an imbalanced half-map scenario because, of course, Cyril did mine some of this, but not that much. He didn't even touch the gas geysers. Uh, this is one of the later drone rushes I've ever seen. But the Corruptors, will he recall? Is it too late already? The units have to come back. He, he did, wasn't quite in position. Down goes a Nexus. And with it, a, a few hundred gas and minerals. There's really not that much left, though. The Zealots, the, the, the drones burrow, but you can't burrow a hatchery. That's next patch. And, and we've slowed down a little bit. Is Cyril starting to realize this could go till the last mineral is mined? Maybe we're not going to throw away hundreds of units anymore. He's lost 558 so far. Showtime at 255. Now, of course, Protoss units are, are significantly more expensive than most of their Zerg counterparts. Oh, some good trades there. He has He's working on plus three attack. He's on plus two with those Corruptors, but they're doing real damage now. Especially against massive air units. I neglected to mention that. Great for sniping off carriers and motherships. This base had to be rebuilt. Several long distance mining. He's down to 61 drones, making his army much larger. The Corruptors sniping another Nexus, it looks like. Looks like Showtime has decided to just long distance mine from what's left of this base. He's at 60 workers, so 140 army supply on either side. This Nexus goes down to the Caustic Spray. But it will be rebuilt. Another, well, that happened. Now 
that happened too. I don't <laughs> As an ultra list, yeah, burrows just out of cannon range. These phoenixes, which have survived most of the game, finally sniped off. How many Templar? Six Templar with plenty of energy for Storm. Where are they, actually? They're lagging behind, but nearly full energy. That's two Storms and a feedback apiece. Or any combination. The, the Corruptor's looking to get a snipe here, because of course the Void Ray is moving quite slow. That Ultralisk maybe uh, bury burying its head in the sand wasn't the greatest option at that point. But we're getting to the situation where the, the map can mine out. Now, Cyril has a lot more money in the bank, but throughout this game, that hasn't seemed to matter that much. A little bit of creep taken out, but this might be a game where Showtime actually just never attacks. Just at no point does Showtime attack. He just defend. I mean, it's been 26 minutes of defense here. If he can go another, well, an what, another like 10, we're mining out in, in 10 or 12 more minutes. Uh, Cyril will have mined out of almost all of his minerals at this current rate in, in 10 minutes. So it, it, Showtime will take a little longer. He's taking these bases a little later. But it, of course there will be money in the bank, but the map will be mined out in 15 minutes at the current rate. Just give or take a few minutes. That's a lot of infestors. 20 infestors. No vipers. For better or for worse, he's got plenty of spore. We're getting to that point where spore crawlers are part of the army. These lings. Still no adrenal gland. Killing probes. That's the wrong button. I don't know. Doesn't have a huge impact right now, but the shield battery doing its best. Every mineral, despite the fact he's about to have over 9,000 minerals in the bank. Every mineral is starting to count. Five more gateways on the way for Showtime. Is that for... No, he's just building five more gates. He just decided he wanted more. Okay. There's these birds in the background. But... Ugh. Oh. How does this end? We're, we're starting to see backwater's natural creatures are, are starting to rebel against the exploitation of its natural resources. But I don't think either of these players have the best interests of the uh, natural creatures in mind. More changelings taken out. Blink is on the way. It, we're getting to the point where at some point Showtime may switch from a Sky Toss army because if Cyril wins a fight but loses his ground army and only has corruptors, then Blink Stalkers warping in have a chance to make the difference. So there could be a Protoss tech switch. That's what Showtime is preparing for. At the same time, Cyril can literally do anything besides make Hydras and Lurkers because he never made a Hydra net. But Cyril has all of the options open to him. It looks like Showtime has just decided, F that, I'm not dealing with this. Uh, I'm not losing more interceptors. I have as few minerals as it is. So, we've definitely slowed down a bit, but the creep is being denied. That is so many infestors, so many purple bars. We'll have to see if Cyril is a wizard. And can he cast all his spells in the right order at the right time? Nope, even the Ultras can't go up that ramp. Too many cannon, shield batteries, a single immortal. There are no Broodlords. Zerglings killing any amount of immortals is a big loss. There are no broodlords here to really siege up. So, that is the big concern. Some infested Terrans come out. Whoa, he catches some with a neural parasite. Your strength is now my strength. He uses them to hold them and kill. The neural par- I forgot about the neural parasite. That can change everything. It's gonna come down to the feedbacks. Are there any oracles to tag this army? There is one. The army tags are critical because if he's not able to get the right storms or the right feedbacks, well then the infestors will just take half the army. One and a half armies against half an army, I think usually wins. But if the infestors are gone, then that's most of the stopping power. The corruptors are there after the infestors get their spells off. If, if we get neurals and fungals and even some infested terrans, the corruptors don't lead the fight, they follow. 
Oh, God. Oh, it's all stacked up. But he gets the Oracle. He has to rebuild that immediately. There you go. Yeah. The Oracle is so important. If he doesn't have the ability to tag these units, the probes come out. If he can't tag the units, um, then he's not going to... Well, he, he can't take a good fight. Pretty much it just comes down to luck then. And Cyril is not uh, one who leaves things to luck. Awkwardly, the um, the launch tower is only taken by by changelings here. Showtime realizes that. There are a grand total of 96 gas. There's 96 gas in these geysers right now. The armies are getting larger and larger as there's less and less to mine from. There's only really one base that's not drying up right now. Oh, a lot of infested Terrans popping. That's only energy. And they're shooting down these interceptors, which cost minerals. Cyril, where as cost inefficient as he was earlier, has really buckled down. Uh, he's he's gotten over his roaring 20s here, and he's settling in for retirement. Uh, building up that trust fund, making sure he has the money when he needs it later on. The unit composition, six queens, five ultras, 20 infestors, any snipes. Well, losing corruptors costs money. At the, on the other side, we've got four immortals, two archons, seven carriers that you can't even see underneath here. Uh, 15 void rays. Void rays are both a strength and a vulnerability. The 15 void rays could either screw or save showtime. I mean, I'm, I'm being really indecisive there. But what I mean is they're very vulnerable to fungal. Uh, and infested Terrans. So if all the Void Rays are stacked up and just get fungled down, uh, is, is it happening? Are we doing this? It's happening! Showtime falls back. Cyril leaves the fight with so many infested Terrans. A Neural Parasite comes out, picks up one of the Archons. No key units yet. The storms haven't really hit home. The infested Terrans are allowing him to push through. A big fungal! This is what I was talking about! The fungal on the Void Rays, he holds them in place. It doesn't quite stun him, but it doesn't need to. The damage is there, but the carriers are fighting back. The Void Rays aren't dead yet. They're brought into the orange. Here come the Corruptors from the side. There are still storms. Incredible, massive storms trying to blow things away. Cyril working around the corners here. The Blake Stalkers come in to reinforce. The, the fight continues. Is there enough on the ground? The Mothership somehow survives. He actually blinks in underneath the Ultralisk. There's still a couple of the uh, Infestors underneath and a couple of Mortals bashing through the Ultras. We're in a ground war now. Five Ultralisk and 50 Lings are the Remax. The Corruptors will survive most of the fight. Showtime lives, but at what cost? More is taken out. Showtime doesn't have the money to remax. Cyril does. He maintained his corruptors, but he wiped out the Sky Toss army. He wiped out the Templar. But there's no Broodlords. Broodlords may be the ultimate choice here. We're back to Banelings. That's a kill move. The Cyril is uh, out of money. If he fails a couple, like, he can remax this time and one more time. If somehow Showtime holds on, as he has for 33 minutes, barely. Oh god, the entire base is being sprayed down. And, and what can... Does he recall? You can't recall at this point. You just gotta give it up. You gotta give it up. No more main. If he recalls, he loses his only mining. And he doesn't have money. This base needs to be retaken. Showtime does not have the money. Still no Adrenal Glands. Making, like, that... Not that it matters much in the main fight, but he keeps making lings. Is why this That's so many Archons, but there are still a few Infestors for Neural and Fungal, both of which are incredibly effective. There's a handful. There's a single carrier. I don't know where that came from. Some blinks in. The Infestors are burrowed. Is there an Oracle? There is. A big tag could change this fight. The bases are falling. Showtime is, a, is essentially a one-base Protoss now. He's split between... There are the Broodlords, and this is, is the Game Ender. Cyril using most of his last gas in order to get... I mean, the Broodlords can, and, and I almost want to say should win, but there is a scenario here where Showtime's able to take the right engagement from the right angle, and the Broodlords, he gets under the Broodlords and takes them out. Because right now, you don't need any more anti-air. 
Showtime doesn't even really have Stargates anymore. He just needs the anti-ground. But here comes Serral. And he can't, once again, if he loses this army, he cannot rebuild. Showtime, he can't rebuild anyways. So it's all down to this. He has to live, but the Broodlords will siege. A beautiful tank hits almost all the infestors. This has to, this is going to have to be a miracle. Like, this... It's not it's non-zero chance for Showtime, but it's it's not a high one. We've got Broodlings raining down. One Ultralisk, but oh, one Broodlord taken out. Beautiful Storms, incredible angle, gets all the Banelings. It, insane Storms right now. Oh my god, all the Broodlords are dying. He doesn't have a tank. The Infestors are dying to the Archon Splash. There's an Observer here. Showtime is trying to hold. But the Archons have changed their, turned their coats. And now they're working against Showtime. He tried to hold, but enough Broodlords survive. Enough Infestors survive. And after 35 minutes, Serral survives with not enough money to remax. He, he wins. And that was just game three. So that game was effectively, 